are um, towards the end of the Couch Surf America tour. <laughs> How are you guys doing so far? Oh, doing well. Yeah, doing yeah. really good. Uh, sadly, fall is just around the corner, whether we'd like it or not, uh, which also means school's coming around. What were you guys like in high school? Uh, I was like the weird kid with black hair that just played acoustic guitar all the time. I dropped out all sports, <laughs> just kind of went for it. Yeah, that was me. I had Liberty Spikes, and I was into the punk scene and playing hacky sack in the corner of the hallways and stuff. I was, I was a stranger. Yeah. Just the oddities of high school, you know. Did you guys go to the same high school or a different one? Uh, I'm from Ohio. Jared's from Phoenix. Yep. So the answer would be quite different. <laughs> quite different. Um, what radio stations did you listen to growing up in those two different areas? Uh, I listened to this station called 89X, which is like this Detroit alternative rock wing that came down, and it was awesome. Yeah. Was... We used to have this thing called 103.9 The Edge, and they played like alternative music and punk and stuff. I remember like when you when they like, they played I think like because Chiodos is from uh, Detroit they like played like local bands sometimes. I remember when I heard them on there for the first time when I was like 16 I was like sick screaming music yes <laughs> like, <laughs> like yes. <laughs> That's music I like. Yeah. Nice. Um, so what music uh, either musicians or songs did you turn to as a teenager when life got rough? Oh man can you go first. Lincoln Park, uh, Chester is my idol, and he's the first like person I've ever heard scream in a band, and it like completely changed my style of music that I listen to. Oh man, that's hard. Uh, I kind of just started hanging out with friends that listened to a variety of different like hardcore mixes and stuff. I think like the first band that I heard besides like Slipknot or something was like Barrier Dead, and that was just like the heaviest thing I'd ever heard. So I really. Got me. Not always uh, radio-friendly music, but definitely Linkin Park sort of uh, is the, are the, sorry guys, grandfathers or at least fathers. That's nicer. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the fathers of the, of the sort of uh, the mixing of rock and other, you know, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll call no, it they're, that. They're great. <laughs> yeah, we just played a show in uh, Europe with them and download, and it was awesome. I was screaming every single word. Yeah, front of house. <laughs> yeah, we got to watch them from front of house, and it was just like so nostalgic because they did their hybrid theory from start front to back, and it was just like, yes. So I think us and every other fanboy that played in the band was there watching. So that is a, a great <laughs> album. That's definitely one that you can get away with playing start oh, to finish, and it's yes. still yeah. holding up. <laughs> so why do you think kids gravitate towards music when things are tough? I think it gives them an outlet. I think it gives them the voice to kind of verbalize what they're feeling inside. And so naturally, there's like an aggression there with some of the heavier music. And that's like what they want to get out. And that's how they're feeling. So I think a majority of kids kind of confide in that subculture and find that to be a good outlet in a positive way, hopefully, you know. <laughs> Definitely. Like I had problems with my parents growing up and stuff. So like I just went in my room, cranked the music and just tuned out the rest of the world. Yeah. Helps a lot. Agreed. Guilty as well. Uh, so your album, speaking of, of your music, uh, Hollow Bodies is almost a year old, a year old later this week. Um, so I'm sure that uh, many fans are wondering when they can expect new music. Uh, I think Eric and I are going to start working on stuff immediately after this tour. We kind of had that planned where we tried writing on the road in the past and it just doesn't really work and it feels rushed. And I think we just want to be home and have like the proper creative process and enough time to really sit with the material so I think we're all going to get together and probably start working on it after this tour. And there were plans for an EP at some yeah. point and they got scrapped? We were writing to try and do something and it just the way it just of touring and stuff it just wasn't going to happen so and it's like we would rather put out quality over quantity and I think that's where a lot of people kind of make the mistake and so that's why we kind of have like these these gaps but that's because we want the material to be the best you know, so do you feel a pressure to put out music faster than you would like? I, th I think so. I think that uh, in the way the scene is now and just having a certain sense of relevancy, uh, we definitely feel the pressure to always kind of have a consistent amount of material coming out because it's almost like conveyor belts of how easy like these bands are showing up. And so to be an older band and to still have some relevancy is just – you know, it leaves us pretty awestruck to begin with, but then we have to continue to, you know, supply and demand and give them what they want, so. <laughs> Pressure. It's like you put something out, then when's the next one? When's yeah. the next one? I mean, I remember like a month after it came out, they were like, when's the new CD? And we're like, 
Are you kidding? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So it's definitely more pressure well, than when's necessary. The last, when's that? And it's like we just don't. I feel like we don't want to put anything else yeah. out. That's I f not to be rude, but lesser than us. And I think some bands, you know, just say this quantity over quality, and it's just like I can't tell the difference between records sometimes. So. And that and that's a good point too. A lot of people. A lot of bands out there put out what seems like the very same album over and over again, year after year, just to have that. I think with Hollow Bodies, too, it was our chance to really, like, take a step up from Awakening and, you know, obviously going into whatever's next. We want to continue that same mindset to kind of grow because we're older. We listen to different things. We, we attain influence from different material, and it's just that's how we verbalize ourselves. And so I think that's kind of the course we're going to go. So you guys toured for Hollow Bodies in the winter. Um, and then sort of took a break. Bo had a baby. Well, his wife had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, to yeah. biology <laughs> folks. Um, how many months were you actually on a break? Oh man, it was like three or four months. It was it was a good gap, yeah, but it good but it was needed. Uh, like we had just toured so much, and it, it I would have loved the tour more, but it's nice to just have that time to go home. You know, it was like in between moves. I moved to Phoenix, and like. I know the guys just wanted to kind of be with their significant ones. So, yeah, we had a, like a three yeah. or four months Sometimes break. you just need a break from, like, the constant touring and, like, the pressures of everything. And it's it's nice to, like, rejuvenate yeah. yourself. You know, it makes – it makes. I remember going into Hall of Bodies, I was excited again to tour. And I had, like, that – I'm, like, angst to want to go play shows again and how I missed it. So that – it makes it new because sometimes it can be a bit monotonous when you're always touring. And it just weighs down and everybody kind of – you know, it kind of goes numb at that point. So I'm sure being stuck in a large rectangular box with the same folks over and over again, even though you guys all like each other, yeah. after a while it gets to be a little much. Yeah, you know, you just, you're just in everyone's living space, so it's nice to just be able to go back into your own comfort zone. <laughs> your own bed. I'm sure that's amazing as well. Do you think the album um, was inhibited or, or, or suffered at all because of the lack of touring? Or do you hope that this tour and, and continuing to move forward kind of helps rejuvenate it? I think that going forward and touring plans, we do have a plan to continue doing some, like hitting other markets that we haven't hit yet. But I, I, I think the turnouts have been really good for most of it. I know Hall Bodies, we consider to be a pretty big success for us. And, you know, overseas, we got to hit a lot of the festivals. We'd never done that before. And so... Hopefully, we'll all the stars will kind of line up, and we'll be able to have a nice, solid summer this next year. So yeah. that's kind of what we're hoping for. I think it's been a good rec like record cycle and stuff. Uh, we hit Warp Tour to like promote the album. Then we came out and did the headliner, and we went to Europe already. And we're hoping ABR. ABR. Yeah, that's one of our, yeah. our best friends. It's been really good. Like great turnout. So I can't complain. Not don't have much. <laughs> to complain. Tour touring with ABR. I mean, that's. I mean, August Burns Red are so amazing. Yeah. So amazing. Um, so plans for any more music videos for this album? I'm not in the loop for that, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Uh, I maybe, I mean, we put 40 Days Out pretty late in Awakening Cycle, so. I've heard there might be a chance of doing See You on the Outside. That's a possibility, but we're not sure yet. I mean, it, it would depend. If it works out, that'd be awesome, but honestly, I'm happy with what, what we've put out so far, so. So you mentioned, uh, you know, you did Warp Tour last year, uh, headlined, t uh, joined up with, with uh, August Burns Red. How do you go about creating a set list now? Well, uh, I think now some of the songs it's kind of nice to be able to not put on because we have so much more n newer material and it's able to, we're able to like really play sets that we want, like going into ABR we're able to like kind of dictate, okay, we want a really fast, heavy set that's going to kind of, ABR fans might not hate us as much, you yeah. know? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's, it's true, though. Like, we couldn't play, like, Hey Baby in 40 Days on a tour like that and not get a little grief. So, you know, we have so much material with the, with the new record that we're able to really compress and just put together a set that is solid and what we'll do is sometimes is we'll play through it a couple of times at practice we'll debate if we what we want to do we'll do a vote and it's cool like we put like a list of potential songs and we just kind of xed out what you know everyone didn't want to play so do you guys change up the set list throughout a tour or you know play certain songs you think a certain audience would want to hear 
Not not really, and that's because we do like lights and stuff, and that's all the click tracks, and with and so we can't really change that up too much. Now we we can do like on, like on this tour, you know, sometimes we'll do an encore if we're headlining or not, and then it, it kind of can't change just because we do have lights and et cetera programs. So once we kind of decide, it's pretty ingrained in stone at that point. <laughs> You mentioned um, headlining. You guys, are you varying, or is it every other day? How do you, who it's, decides? It's every other day. And so tonight we do, yesterday they did, and then vice versa. That's the most democratic way to go about it. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so we talked a little bit earlier about radio stations uh, and stations you listen to growing up. What's your opinion of what are called, uh, what are considered terrestrial radio stations, regular old school radio stations versus satellite radio which do you prefer um and as when it comes to listening and when it comes to exposure for your music go ahead oh, sorry i definitely like satellite better there's more like variety of music out there like besides the same song on repeat over and over again like you don't get sick of it and just a better chance to like hear new music yeah i definitely i i I do Spotify radio mainly, and I enjoy that because I'm able to just find new artists and playlists and everything else and whatever else. But I also do enjoy going home and turning on, like, my old station and hearing, like, some of the old uh, announcers just kind of for the nostalgia of it. But it's almost like talk radio because it's just, like, funny at that point. So. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially when you grow up with only one radio station. Yeah. available it is sort of like a, a time capsule you're like you're brought back to that you could say like the names of you know the djs and stuff and like when i hear it i'm like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um what is your opinion of uh the music ranking systems such as billboard and and how um because a lot of fans out there don't realize that bands are given the concerts that they're given based on album sales and and first week sales and radio play do you think that's always the most accurate measurement of a uh, band success? Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, there's there's tons of times where a band will just absolutely destroy it live. The crowd will obviously be in favor of them, but then like the headliner will go after them, and nobody cares. You know, and it's all based on fake numbers and everything else. It's there's definitely some things behind the books, you know, behind the scenes that really put that all into motion, but. It's kind of like we have to play with the cards we're dealt and deal with it. So it's not always fair, and we kind of kind of wrote little stabs at that, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> Fair enough. No, I, I've asked uh, this next question to bands, and I've gotten a wide variety of answers on quite the opposite side. Um, so how do you measure success in 2014 when album sales are, are constantly waning due to legal and illegal downloads and just sort of what music is how how do you feel successful i mean i don't to be honest i don't really care like yeah. uh, we put out music not because you know it, it's nice to have people relate to it but at the same time as an artist it's like that's our creative outlet and it's cool to get that out so i didn't really care like if hollow bodies did anything i remember telling my dad i was like i don't care if not one person buys it i think it's the best record we ever put out and that's what it is but you know i guess if i had to measure it i would say concert attendees yep. bodies in the venue because that's the draw like you can sell 40,000 first week but if you can't bring 500 kids to a 500 cab venue it doesn't really matter so so it's not just uh likes on facebook that's always good to know <laughs> very very true buy that now so it's like you could just it's it's i don't really yeah, see I, I agree i think people need to realize that that number it's on a real. screen it, it's not real like all of that social media if you delete that you know it's a fan base that you attain outside of that that you know that's what comes and buys t-shirts that's what comes and waits first in the front row you know that stuff's great but i wouldn't base a band success off of like twitter followers and vice versa so and it's also weird that you can now buy those those numbers that's yeah, I mean, super you, weird yeah it's crazy Damn you, technology. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, so you mentioned uh, considering starting to work on new material. What's up next for Bless the Fall after uh, this tour? We have a nice little break, and that's where I think we focus. We we had that intentionally to try and start writing. Um, there are going to be some tours in the winter, and I think we have everything lined up for going into the next year. So we're just kind of working on that right now, and we'll we'll gauge the rest of it depending on how material starts coming out in these next upcoming months.
Excellent. We'll stay tuned for much more from Bless the Fall. This is Jackie. Thanks to All Access and In the Key of Change. All right. That's it.